You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network. For more quality options programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app, available in iTunes and on Google Play. The options market can be a confusing place. Sorting through the daily avalanche of data, alerts, updates, articles, and analysis to find the most important information is an overwhelming prospect. But now you have help. Welcome to the Options News Rundown, the only program that breaks through the noise to bring you the most important news and information from the world of options. Every day, we bring you the top five option stories curated by the options experts at theoptionsinsider.com, the premier source for options information. The Options News Rundown is brought to you by Market Taker Mentoring, the leader in options trading education. Get trader education, daily trade ideas, and more with a free one-week trial of Market Taker Mentoring's Live Advantage Group coaching class by visiting markettaker.com slash insider. And now it's time to break through the noise. It's time for your Options News Rundown. Good morning. Today is Wednesday, May 29th, 2019. This is your Options News Rundown. I'm Dan Passarelli. Our first story today is from Investing.com. It's the top five things to know in the market on Wednesday. First thing to know is risk aversion rises on reports that China is to restrict rare earths exports. Global stocks traded lower and bonds rallied on Wednesday on fears of possible Chinese countermeasures in the ongoing trade war with the U.S. China's state-run media suggested that the country could limit its exports to the U.S. of rare earths, used in everything from high-tech consumer electronics to military equipment, in a move to exert pressure on Washington. Uh, The flight from risk also impacted the bond market as investors pivoted to safety. The yield on the 10-year Treasury fell to its lowest level since September 2017. German yields fell deeper into negative territory and inched towards record lows around minus 0.2%. Asian stocks closed mostly lower, although China's Shanghai composite eked out gains of 0.2% as rare earth mining stocks surged. European shares were off more than 1% across the board as trade concerns added to negative sentiment from Italy's dispute with the European Commission over its budget. Further dampening spirits, uh, Germany, the Eurozone's largest economy, saw unemployment increase for the first time in two years in May. The second thing to know is Huawei challenges legality of U.S. defense bill. China's Huawei technologies filed a motion for summary judgment in its lawsuit against the U.S. government in the telecoms equipment maker's latest bid to fight sanctions from Washington that threatened to push it out of global markets. Huawei is asking to declare the 2019 National Defense Authorization Act unconstitutional. The NDAA placed a broad ban on federal agencies and their contractors from using Huawei equipment on national security grounds, citing the company's ties with the Chinese government. The motion comes amid an escalating trade dispute between the world's two biggest economies, exacerbated by separate accusations of bank fraud and corporate theft that the U.S. made against Huawei and its chief financial officer. The third thing to note today is Boeing's 737 MAX may not return to service until August. The International Air Transport Association suggested that the Boeing 737 MAX may not be cleared to return to service until August. The 737 MAX was grounded globally in March after a crash in Ethiopia killed all 157 people on board. The model's second deadly crash in five months. We do not expect something before 10 to 12 weeks 
in re-entry into service. IATA Director General Alexander de Juniac told reporters in Seoul, but that is not our hands. That is, that is not in our hands. That is in the hands of regulators. IATA plans to organize a summit with airlines, regulators, and the manufacturer in five to seven weeks to discuss what is needed for the 737 MAX return to service, he said. The fourth thing to know today is oil prices dive on global demand worries and U.S. inventories are on tap. Oil prices registered a sharp decline on Wednesday as President Donald Trump's more conciliatory tone towards Iran eased fears of a supply crunch and focused minds on the demand consequences of the U.S.-China trade war. U.S. crude futures lost the dollar thirty-seven or two point three percent to fifty-seven dollars and seventy-seven cents by five thirty-one a.m. Eastern, while Brent oil traded down a dollar fifty or 2.2% to $67.17. Ahead on the economic calendar, weekly data on U.S. crude inventories was delayed one day this week due to Monday's holiday. The American Petroleum Institute will release its figures late Wednesday after five straight builds, while the Energy Information Administration's official report is due Thursday amid expectations for a draw of 0.8 million barrels. And the fifth thing to know today is retail earnings are set ahead of the open. With no, ma with no major U.S. macro data scheduled for Wednesday, retail earnings will be in focus ahead of the opening bell. Dick's Sporting Goods is expected to report a profit of 59 cents per share on sales of about $1.9 billion according to analysts' forecast compiled by Investing.com. Analysts also expect the retailer, which is vulnerable to tariffs on Chinese manufactured goods, to register a decline of 1.3% in comparable sales, according to Briefing.com. Abercrombie & Finch is expected to post a loss of $0.43 cents a share with sales coming in at about $733.4 million. And Canada Goose maker of out outerwear is forecast to earn three cents per share for its latest quarter on sales of 119.4 million dollars. Our second story today is from CNBC.com weekly mortgage applications drop 3.3 percent as spring housing season draws to a close. Lower mortgage rates aren't enticing home buyers much as the spring housing season draws to a close. Total mortgage application volume fell 3.3% last week compared with the previous week, according to the Mortgage Bankers Association's Seasonally Adjusted Index. Volume was 15% higher than the same week one year ago when interest rates were higher. Mortgage refinance volume fell 6% for the week, but was markedly higher than a year ago, up 29%. Interest rates at this time last year were 51 basis points higher so fewer homeowners could benefit from a refinance. The average contract interest rate for 30-year fixed rate mortgages with conforming loan balances remained unchanged last week at 4.33%, with points decreasing uh, to 0.42% from 0.43%, including the origination fee, for loans with a 20% down payment. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is news you can use for today, Wednesday, May 29th, 2019, your options news rundown. I'm Dan Passarelli. Trade smart and have a great day. The options news rundown is brought to you by Market Taker Mentoring, the leader in options trading education. Get trader education, daily trade ideas, and more with a free one week trial of Market Taker Mentoring's Live Advantage Group coaching class by visiting markettaker.com slash insider. The 
The preceding program was a production of the Options Insider Radio Network. For more quality options programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app, available in iTunes and on Google Play. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. 